Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maaike. Today I am going to be talking to you about my Dutch bookshelf. This is a bit of a random one. I have only a few shelves with like other things than English novels slash books, uh, you could say. And I've, I'm sort of going through those one by one before I do an overall like bookshelf tour, hopefully towards the end of the year. I already showed you all of my children's books and all of my cookbooks, so I'll make sure to link those in the description description box down below in case you would like to see those. But in case you didn't know, I'm not a native speaker of English. In fact, I'm Dutch, which also means that, you know, Dutch books are a thing, you would think. Um, but I'm not someone who is very much into reading Dutch books until very, very recently, my Dutch teacher in secondary school completely killed all of my joy for reading, which means that Dutch books have always had a very negative connotation for me until I read a book last year that made me go like, huh, wait a minute, apparently good things have been written in Dutch. So then I decided to take it upon myself to ask recommendations from friends and family and starting to like buy them, accumulate them, and now I'm super excited to actually start reading them. So a lot of these books are super famous Dutch works, like if you know Dutch literature, there's a couple of like standard works that I just never got around to that I'm now very much looking forward to. Um, so let me just start and go through it. As I mentioned, I haven't read everything, so I don't very often even know what things are about, I just know that they came recommended to me. All right, so I have no clue whether any of these books are translated into English, I do have to apologize. And I also have no clue what their titles might be if they have been. Some of these are very famous and I know have been probably translated. And I mean, some of these have been turned into English language movies even, but let's just start with the book that sort of got this train rolling for me. And that is Grand Hotel Europa by Ilya Leonard Pfeiffer. This is the book that I read last year that I was like, oh wow, <laughs> Dutch literature can actually be good. Uh, this book was one that's very much hyped up by Dutch press. And I remember seeing an episode of like a Dutch talk show where the author, who's actually from the town I used to live in, like he went to my university and I've also seen him like in real life, like not that I know him, but I've seen him about town. Uh, back when he was still living in Leiden and I was a student. Grand Hotel Europa was the book that was very much raved about. I saw an interview with him where they talked about this book and I was like, that just looks like something I really might enjoy. And then I treated myself to this over the summertime because Dutch books are just super expensive. Like an English pocket will set you back like 10 euros and these kind of behemoths will cost you like 25. I do have to say lots of attention to detail, like it's a hardback, you get the little ribbon, like it's got a nice cover, you know, the whole nine yards. So it was well worth it. It's just that when I started reading this, <laughs> my biggest pet peeve was the typeset. <laughs> the typeset and the layout, because I'm not used to Dutch layouting and I knew it was different because I teach English layouting to Dutch people. <laughs> but then to see it in real life, my brain just, like I couldn't, like the way this is just, like laid out, it's like Times New Roman, like it's just, it's just not a very easy to read book from that perspective, like it took me a good chapter or two to get into it, but once I did and I really felt the story, like it was a little long winded in places, but I did really like it. This is sort of, well he, the author himself is sort of like the main character, but not quite. It's a bit philosophical in that sense, like is it really him or is it not? And you're sort of following him as he is, lamenting his lost love. Is it, what's, what's her name again? Cleo, I think she's called. And he holds up in this Grand Hotel Europa. But everything is like a metaphor and an analogy. So this Grand Hotel Europa is old fashioned Europe that's like overrun by tourists and like immigration and all of these aspects are in there. It has a really, really good like sarcastic view on like mass tourism in Venice. It's, it sounds very random, but it works in the story. There's this huge analogy with like classical literature at some point, which is super fun too. Um, and it's just, <laughs> it was just really funny. It was very clever. It was very well done, very well written. And this book was just like the moment where I was like, okay, 
I need to get myself some more Dutch literature. So what else do I have here? Well, there's one book that isn't literature, but that one of my coworkers actually bought me. Um, so it's a book about leadership. So Mathieu Wegeman, Leiding geven aan professionals, niet doen. So this is about uh, like leadership for like people with like uh, like a higher level of education, you could say. Uh, and, and how they like to be more independent. So when you're trying to actually lead them, they don't really appreciate that, etc., etc. And she was like, well, this is very useful for me when I wanted to go into management. Maybe it's useful for you at some point in your career. Here you go, as like a belated birthday present. So now I have this, I need, still need to read it. Two books that I've read were already featured in like, I think wrap ups in March. This is the yearly like book gift. Um, we always have a book week in March. If you buy a Dutch book during that week, you get a free book. This is by Anne-Yette van der Zijl. Uh, it's about a couple in, uh, I think it's South Carolina during like, you know, slavery and all that. And it's a Dutch man who goes there for business reasons. And then he gets really ill and he's staying with a family friend. And one of the girls who's taking care of him is a slave in that household and they fall in love. And this is a true story. He ended up em immigrating her and the children they had together to the Netherlands to keep her safe. And then Het Water Komt by Rutger Brechtman. You will see this name popping up a few, few more times. He's written some books that have definitely been translated into English. And this is his little essay about how the Netherlands should be very careful about the rising tides, literally, because the Netherlands is pretty much located below sea level. If we didn't have dunes and dikes, we would all be water. And that, of course, climate change is going to be a very big problem for us in the long run. That's what this is about. Right, some more books then. This was definitely recommended to me by friends. This was Thomas Roseboom, Publieke Werke. I believe it's a historical fiction novel set in like the 19th century, like Amsterdam. I love historical fiction. That's all I know about it. It is a very big book so i'm a bit afraid of this one it's like over 500 pages i'm sure um i mentioned i would have more Rutger Brechtman for you and that's these two books i decided to buy his two most famous books this is gratis geld for iedereen which has been translated into english as utopia for realists and this is the book he also discussed in davo uh, which caused quite a stir um so uh i do i do still want to read this and this is the Meeste Mensen Deugen uh, by the same author, as I mentioned. And this was re uh, released in English in May under the title Humankind. I also saw his theater show where he kind of talks about the concepts, mainly from this book, I believe. Um, and I also, like, it, it was the last thing I did before we went into lockdown. So I still need to read these. I, I've read his journalism pieces about these things for the correspondent. So I think I know already a lot of the things that he has to say also because I already saw that theater thing. Um, but yeah, these two books I still wanted to read and I thought I might as well just give them a whirl. Uh, apparently they're quite quick and easy reads. We'll see. Don't know. And then we have this book, and this is this is Wees Onzichtbaar by Murat Isik, and I believe this is fairly a fairly new book. My mom recommended this to me. Oh, it won the literature prize for literature in 2018. I'm not exactly sure <laughs> what this is about. My mom just said if you want to read a really good book, but that's an, an emotional roller coaster and just a big tearjerker then you need to read this. I believe it has to do with domestic abuse, like an abusive father, that sort of situation. That's all I know. I just bought it because my mom was raving about it, pretty much. You'll, you'll, hear my, you'll, you'll hear me referencing my mom a lot in this because my mom is an avid reader of Dutch literature. And then uh, another author who I've already read like a little essay by, but I have never read any of his longer stuff, and that's Euskan Akjol. Um, he did a book, his first one was called Eus, and the second one is called Tourist. Uh, and these are, I think he uses a lot of, like from his own life that he uses as examples, I think. I'm not entirely sure, he's in the media quite a bit, at least he used to be a couple of months ago. And I, I quite like his opinions. I like the TV programs that he makes. He seems to have a good view on things. So I hope his novels can bring me that too. And then I have also bought a couple of books of what are known like, like the biggest authors that the Netherlands has ever produced. I've got a couple of their books in here too. Um, and one of those authors would be Aafde van der Heide. I, w I, I didn't know which one of his books to buy. Um, so I just read all the blurbs and just went through everything. And I was like, okay, this sounds like something that I might like. 
Vol and Outers, that's the title of it, and I absolutely have no clue anymore what this was going to be about. And then the biggest one of them all, The Discovery of Heaven in English, The Ontdekking van den Hemel uh, by Harry Mulisch. Mulisch was, he, he's no longer with us, um, but he passed away a few years ago, maybe a decade ago or so. Uh, and this is like his magnus opus. Um, this was turned into a, an English language movie that was actually recorded in Leiden, the town where I used to live. I think it actually has a scene where you can see my street <laughs> where I used to live. Uh, and there's like a book uh, bookstore in there, etc., etc. Um, this book is just one that everybody raves about. It's one of those books like if you haven't read it, who are you? So I decided like okay, maybe I maybe I should give it a shot. I read the Anslag which I believe has been translated into English as well uh, by Mulisch, which is about like his book about the Second World War. And I read that when I was a teenager and I wasn't a fan. <laughs> so this one has me nervous, but maybe like I buy books to read them whenever it tickles my fancy. And this is one where I'm like, you know, I'm going to read this at some point in my life. It, I could be 50 by the time I read it, but I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> like it's my intention to read it at some point. And then a book that is possibly my mom's favorite book of all time, at least this author, she always raves about. And it's Jan Siebelink, Kniele op een bed viola. And this is the movie tie-in. Um, this, this, is, this is a story about, uh, not necessarily like domestic abuse, but like a very, like very restricting upbringing with like a religious background to it. And apparently it's also drawn from the author's personal experience. Um, my mom loves all of his books, but some of my friends have told me like if you've read this one You've read everything he does because the same themes come up in, in all of his works So I just decided to go with the standard. Let's see if I like it All right, so now we're getting also to the point where like there are a couple of things here that well There are literature like Dutch books, but they're not like the highest of the high literature that we have and one of those is definitely this one, and that's Hendrik Groen, Pogingen iets van het leven te maken. And this was also turned into a TV series here in the Netherlands. This is written from the perspective of someone who is in an elderly home. Wait, sort of like he, he doesn't want to waste away, so he's trying to make the most of it. Turns out that this person isn't actually real. It's a fake, like a pseudonym for someone who's actually reading these stories. But it's, a, it's the tagline of it is the, the secret diary of Hendrik Groen. Uh, 83 and a quarter years old. So it's about his adventures in his elderly home and apparently it's very endearing and very heartwarming. So I would like to read this at some point. This is a very recent book. I actually spotted this also in a like interview with the author on um, in a TV show. Manon Uphoff, Valle is als Vliegen. I believe this is about sexual abuse. It, it's a very short one. So this is actually one of the first ones I would like to get to. It's, again, my mom already read it from the library and she said it was very harrowing. That seems, <laughs> that sort of seems to be the theme. Like, Dutch books are never, like, very pleasant. Is, like, from what I get from blurbs and when people talk about it, it's always about, like, very serious, heavy topics. So lots of trigger warnings in this video, for sure, if you, if you know Dutch and you would like to read it. Then I also bought some Belgian authors, because Belgian authors, of course, Flemish, if they are Flemish speaking, then, and you're Dutch, then you can, you can read that very well too. So I bought some Griet op den Beek, Vele Hemels Boven de Zevende, and Kom Hier Dat Ik U Kus. Again, my mom raved about these, and that's the only reason why I bought them. My mom has good taste, okay? My mom has good taste. Same thing goes for Dimitri Verhulst, The Helaasheid Der Dinge. I believe this was also turned into a movie that I saw, like the trailer of, and I was like, oh, but I'm someone who usually then prefers to read the book than watch the movie. So that's why I thought I could give this a whirl. And again, this is quite a short one. Then something a bit more contemporary as well, uh, Herman Koch, Het Diner. Um, this is a book that again has lots of rave reviews and also colleagues of mine have said that they really enjoy this. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but I believe it's about this moment where some like, like grown up, like couples come together with this dinner and somehow during the course of that dinner, their entire life starts spiraling, spiraling out of control or they find out about all of these secrets. It's one of those kind of plot lines, I believe, but I'm not entirely sure about this one. But again, my mom <laughs> loves this author and she said I should definitely read this one. Another big one, <laughs> another really big one, Gerard Reve, De Avonde. I've never read this. And apparently this is, this is supposed to be so, so good but apparently it is not appreciated by everyone. 
So this one, this is one that makes me nervous. But then again, I have the experience in English that I quite like books that other people don't like and that I like unlikable characters. And I believe this has quite a strong unlikable character. I don't know. I just know that Gerard Reve, together with Harry Mulisch and Jan Wolkers, who will be coming up next, are like the big three. So I wanted to make sure the big three were represented in, in this bookshelf. <laughs> we need to talk about this. Jan Wolkers Turks fragt, how I got through puberty without ever, ever, having read, ever having read this or watched the entire movies from the 70s. I don't know either. I only know snippets. <laughs> um, but Turks Fruit is a novel by Jan Wolkers that is known and very famous for being quite sexually explicit. Um, apparently it's really good. Some people say it's quite tastefully done. Other people hate it for that reason. I just thought I had to read this to make up my own mind. That's just, that's just how I feel. And then another one of the greats, Willem Frederik Hermans, and I decided to go with Onder Professor. He also wrote, I think, The Donkere Ka da Kamer van Damocles, which I know, like, like that's my best friend's favorite, one of my best friend's favorite, favorite Dutch books. So I was thinking, oh, maybe, but then I read what this was about, and I was like, oh, a bit like with AFT van der Heide, now that I own the book, I no longer remember what intrigued me to order it. <laughs> But I know I, I, I was intrigued enough with it. And I, I quite like that cover. It's very sort of surreal. Sort of like surrealism, bit of like, what's it? What's that painter again? Marguerite, I think, has that too. And then again, another one where I'm like, why did I not read this? Because all of my friends were reading this when we were in secondary school. I don't know how I picked my list for Dutch, but <laughs> it, this was an on it. Bernlef Hesseschema. And I believe this is about Alzheimer's or Dementia, I believe. It's about at least someone who forgets their memories. Um, so this is a very famous one. It's short. That's probably why everybody in my class started reading it. <laughs> um, but yeah, th this is apparently really good. And it's one that I know a lot of my friends, even back in the day, did enjoy. One book that isn't actually Dutch. <laughs> this one. Uh, Albert Camus, De Peste. It's actually French. La Peste. That's what it's actually called. Um, but I decided, I, I just really liked that cover. So I was like, hmm, I might read it. And since the original is French, to me, it doesn't really make any difference whether I would be reading it in Dutch or English. I would have to read a translation anyways. And I've heard really good things about this. And some people have been talking about this, that it's very sort of touching upon themes that are very current now with the virus and all that. So I thought it could be a good one because of that. I don't know. I have never really read a lot of French authors either. So I thought this way I could tip, dip my toe in. And I'm not sure why, but the story, like the blurb just really intrigued me. And then we've got some more current things. So this is Jeroen Brouwer's Client A. Busken. And this was a book of the month for DVD, And that's De Wereld Draait Door, which was a TV show. Uh, where they discuss books quite a lot. And this book was Book of the Month, and it was really much, very much described as sort of like written, as like a stream of conscience almost, from like this client's perspective. I don't know, I was just intrigued with how they were talking about it in the program. It was upon that recommendation pretty much that I read that Grand Hotel Europa. So I was like, I might like this, it might be something completely crazy, I might hate it, I don't know, but I wanted to give it a whirl. Anyways, these were like new and exciting like a couple of years ago and I was like, okay, I might try that. Friends of mine had also recommended that I read, that I read this, Arnold Grunberg Terza, or at least any book by him. I have no clue what this is about. I just thought the cover was quite fun and explicit, so I'm not ex exactly sure what it's all about, but... Um, Apparently he has really good stories. I don't know too much about it because I've never read anything by Arnold Grunberg. I'm not sure how much YouTube is going to like that cover, so I'll just uh, put it behind me. Uh, then Lubach, Arjen Lubach, Magnus. I believe this is his first novel, I think. I always think he's funny in his TV programs. I'm not sure if he his books are anything like it, but then again, there was a blogger who I followed years ago who read this at the time and she was really enthusiastic about it. So when I was sort of like going through like shopping cars and like, oh yeah, I might read some Arjen Lubach as well. Let's see if he can write novels. That's sort of how I felt. And then last but not least, Tommy Wieringa, Joe Speedboat. When I asked my friends, which is a, what is a Dutch book that I have to read according to you guys? This is one of the five titles they give me. Uh, some of the other ones are in, in this shelf now too. And this is just 
I, I'm, I'm not sure what this is about. Again, my mom said this was a good one too. I still need to read it. So there you have it. Those are all of the Dutch books on my shelves. I have definitely tried to accumulate these ever since I read that other book last year. So I definitely now need to start reading this. What I've been, mainly been focusing on, I'm not sure if anybody else does that. Maybe it's just me. But when you get an idea in your head, you first want to get it done like perfectly. I was like, I first want to own all of these books and then I'm going to read them one by one. That, that was my idea behind this entire shelf. So I've just been spending most of 2020 every once in a while picking up a book here and there and then like putting it in order if I had a bit of extra money and then that's how this came about and now I'm super excited. So definitely in the next few months, I'm not sure whether it's still going to be like a 2020 thing uh, because I still have so many English books that I also want to read, but definitely for 2021, one of the things I want to do is then read a Dutch book every single month. That's going to be like the plan like yes i'm already thinking about my content in like six months time i know i'm crazy i don't know if my youtube channel is going to be around in six months time with the amount of uploading that i've been doing in the past few weeks but you know we're here i'm gonna give it a whirl that's sort of the plan to really try and make sure that once i get to these books to really stick to it and read a book per month that's the plan We'll see how that goes. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make one video a week over on this channel, but did you know I also have a beauty channel where I do three videos a week? So make sure you check out that one. It's linked in the description box below. And if you'd like to subscribe, that would be lovely. I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.